Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a tutorial on how I made this needle book. So the patchwork on the front was made in a previous video and I'll leave the link up um, in the description box for that so you can check that out. It wasn't done EPP, it was done without any templates or anything so do check out that video. And here is the inside of the needle book. Now this isn't a pattern or anything like that, it was just be a video showing you the process on how I made this. You can make yours in any size or dimension that you like. So here I've got my patchwork panel. I've added a strip in the middle and either side which is one and a half inches and by the time you've marked up a quarter inch seam on each side then it ends up being an inch. I'm just about to do the same top and bottom. I don't think I um, did this to size. I was actually an inch and a half. Um, yeah, so inch and a half, but I could do two inches by accident. So I'm just trimming that down. And the majority of this needle book is actually hand sewn. So what I'm gonna do here is just mark up the seams where I'm going to sew. The only bits where I sewed it on the machine was where I thought it was integral that there was a little bit more strength there. So I did certain bits on the machine and I'll talk you through those. So I've just marked my quarter inch line and I'm gonna pin this to the top. So I like to pin in the corner and I think I pinned in four or five places along the length of this because it was actually quite wide. If you're doing flying geese, you want to make sure to pin at the point of the flying geese, just so you don't lose the tip of the point. And just make sure your starting corner is all lined up. And then I just do a small running stitch all the way along. And this is just going to essentially make a border around your patchwork panel. You can choose to do this in whatever method you like. You can even go ahead and do it on the machine. You don't even need to add a border. If you wanted to do your patchwork big enough, it can span the whole front of the needle book. So I'm just adding a strip on the bottom. It's really customizable to you. What I wanted to do is just show you the basic construction of how I made the needle book. It was just a idea that I drafted up. I just folded up some bits of paper just to see if I liked the idea of how it would work. Um, and I just wanted to show you how I did that. So I ironed it before it was all ready to be quilted. I'm just trimming it down to make everything square. And then I am using some temporary spray adhesive just to essentially um, make a quilt sandwich, but it's not really a quilt sandwich because I'm not adding any backing. Here I've just realized because in the tutorial I use black thread so that you'd be able to see my stitches. And I'm just realizing now that you can actually see that through the, um, the fabric. So I'm just adjusting that just to try and minimize it. So I just use a little bit of temporary spray adhesive just to stick it all down. I don't go heavy on this. I barely press the nozzle in, to be honest. I just press the no nozzle in a little bit. I always cut my wadding just a little bit extra to the panel. And I'm going to use some embro embroidery floss to do the hand quilting. So here I am just picking out the colors. So I think I've picked the right one and then I spot another one. <laughs> and I'm gonna mark up my quilting lines with a friction pen. I'm not doing anything fancy, I'm just gonna go a quarter of an inch away from the seams, but I don't trust myself to be able to sew in a straight line, so just mark those up, and then this can be erased with an iron or a hairdryer at a later date, so it all comes off. I used to really like the water erasable pens, but then at the Festival of Quilts I bought this friction pen, and it's just life-changing. You don't need to get it wet or anything, it's very easy. So when using embroidery floss, I like to use two strands. You can use one or three or even the whole lot. It depends on how defined you want the quilting to be. But I find that two strands is like the perfect visibility. Mm -hmm. 
I am relatively new to the practice of hand quilting so don't judge my stitches if uh, they're not quite where they should be but do leave me any pointers down in the comments below I would greatly appreciate that I'm thinking I might take a class in hand quilting just to try and improve because I would really like to do you know that type of hand quilting where it's tiny I would love that so that's all finished now and we've got to erase the friction pen so I've got my iron and I just very gently wipe the iron across and it just disappears if you didn't want to iron it because I know you shouldn't technically iron patchwork or want something quilted you can just blast it with a hairdryer and um, it disappears so now we're going to trim the bat into size and now I'm adding my lining and pocket I've messed about with a few configurations of the pocket but I've decided to do one that spans the whole um, width of the needle book and what I'm going to do is turn down the top and then turn it down again just to hide any raw edges that's me burning my hands on the hot fabric <laughs> I wasn't waving I was just burning my hands This is a great project to use for using up scraps and things like that. The majority of these were scraps apart from that um, the lining fabric. That's a Liberty Fat Quarter that I bought. And here I'm just adding a running stitch just along that top edge just to keep the raw edge in but also just to add a little bit of a decorative stitch. Just giving it another press again because I creased it all up and just to make it nice and flat so just make sure you've got all your lining and your pocket nicely lined up and just pin it in place these are the areas that i machine quilt and i'll show you that in just a moment i think when it comes back into frame so that gives you an idea of how it's going to look now this is the tab that i'm going to use to um, close the needle book I think it's an inch and a half wide and this is now folded in half but just judge it of how thick your needle book is going to be how long or how wide you want your tab and I'm just going that's my seam line I'm just going to do a quick seam all the way up I decided to make mine curved at the top but spoiler alert when I actually turn it inside out it's not very curved it's more of a triangle point <laughs> but again you know it, it adds character and I, I quite like how it turned out it's quite fiddly to actually turn it so I used a pokey tool this is a new purchase that I've had recently actually it's a hand turned poking tool and a creaser to mark your quilting lines I bought them off Etsy and the gentleman is really really nice he was very friendly in answering any inquiries and that was really affordable I think the uh, marker was seven pounds and the point turner was cheaper than that so i'll leave the link in the description box to those because i just wanted to give that a mention because i really enjoy that purchase again here i'm just adding some decorative quilting stitches just again with the same embroidery thread so i'm kind of checking to make sure that it's long enough and that it meets where i need it to so it was more than long enough in the end this is my inner pages that's actually one of my mum's old shirts that she gave to me I've quilted it on the machine with um, I think it was an inch one inch apart and it's about an inch all over smaller than the actual outside of the book and I've sewn here on the machine at the sides of the pockets the bottom and all the way up the center and I've sewn on the tab there with the machine just to make sure it's really secure because that's obviously going to get quite a little bit of use over the course of the lifetime of this book and now on to the binding I found this vintage binding in my stash which I really like I think the colours go really well I was going to use a fabric from my stash but I think that this um, 
binding goes a little bit better. So I've used most of that. I've la I um, did the binding around that uh, the needle section of the book. I bound that. I don't think I show that on the camera. But this is how it's going to look over the back tab. All those raw edges are going to be hidden and that will just come over the binding. I'm now going to start the binding in like an inconspicuous area. I, I first thought here would be good but I decide on the bottom back edge is the best place to start it for me. The main thing when sewing the binding, because I'm going to do this by hand rather than on machine, you want to make sure that you're keeping it level um, you're not pulling it too tight down on one side so then essentially the binding would be um, bendy or windy not straight basically try and keep it as parallel as you can to any other lines on the front of the book just so it looks really nice and neat and I've just used um, a polyester thread here just to do an applique stitch just to attach the front of the binding and then I do the same to attach the back of the binding as well so I did use white thread as I was sewing it, I thought I should have used maybe a pale pink thread but you couldn't see much of it anyway and we all like to see our stitches to show that it's handmade don't we? So now is the time for me to add the um, snap closure, I was scared of these snap closures for the longest time um, but they're really quite easy to attach so I use a crochet hook or anything that you've got that will leave a little hole to make a hole in the front you put the male part through and then you get a female part and you attach it to the back and you just cramp crimp it with this little tool I got this kit off Amazon and as you can see the box there in the corner it comes with like a rainbow of different color snaps that you can use but here is me realizing that I haven't done it correct and I've actually when I've crimped it I've actually bent down the integral part of the uh, the snap so all I did is I use that crochet hook just to jam it in between the layers and uh, rip them apart and it come apart quite easily really so to mark where I put the second one I jam the first one in and it leaves a little mark so you can get them lined up perfectly or leave like a little imprint and then just put your pokey tool in the middle of that imprint and that will help you line up the second one. If you want me to show you in more detail about how to attach these I am more than happy to do that because I appreciate I've got the video sped up because this video was initially like 53 minutes long and I didn't think anyone wanted to sit through the real time of it. So give it a real good squeeze, I hold it for a few seconds and there we go, perfect. And at this point I'm realizing that perhaps I would like this little tab to be tight to the book so if you don't mind yours loose you know um, like I said I haven't give you the measurements but just have a play about but all I'm doing here is bending it backwards and I'm just doing applique stitches all around the edge just to secure it down and it actually made the tab feel a little bit more secure as well um, so I am glad that I did this and you can barely see the stitches to be honest so there we go and it just folds around nice and neatly So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, just leave me a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to answer those for you. Um, here's some little bit of footage in a moment of me adding items to this. Um, but I'm going to use it as more of like a storage because I have my needles all over the place in different drawers, different bags. So this is going to help me keep everything together. But day to day, I think I'll keep my needles that I'm using, my favourite one, in the in the pin cushion. 
In a moment, there'll be some links that come up on the screen, which will just give you an option of one of my previous videos to watch and also a link to subscribe to my channel. So if you are interested in doing either of those things, I would greatly appreciate it. You take care. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy.